Welcome back Covalence friends. Today we're going to be getting started with setting up a Postgres database in Heroku. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's get right into it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a web browser and we're going to go to heroku.com and you can see that there's a login and a sign up up here. So typically you would click sign up and you just fill out this information here and it would create your free account. They send you an email just to verify your email address and you'd be good to go. But we already have a login address or a login account, so we're going to go ahead and just log in real quick. So you will see exactly um, what it's going to look like once you get that email and you. Oh, apparently I don't know my login. Let's see. There we go. We're going to set up two factor later on. And this is kind of the dashboard that you get, right? So you have your. Uh, it's basically under your personal um, projects at first. Now there will be a team section if you want to kind of create a new team. You may have you know different apps that you're working on, and you want to invite you know individual contributors to those apps. You can create a new team and build your apps within that team, right? Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just leave it as personal for now. We're going to go to create a new app. Um, we're just going to call this uh, you know DB test. It's not available, so we'll call it covalence postgres test. All right, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and create that. Now it needs a unique name, so obviously DB test was probably something somebody took a long time ago. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and now check out these tabs here. So you can go to our overview page here. Um, not a whole lot is you know done so far since we actually have this like hooked up to anything, but we can take a look at resources. There are no resources as of right now because we haven't actually deployed any app or anything along those lines. Um, our deployment method. Now, Heroku has its own Git process. Uh, it's a little bit of a manual process, which is honestly pretty easy to use. Um, you can actually download the Heroku CLI and you can literally just push a local repository directly to Heroku's Git and it'll actually deploy the app automatically or you can hook it up to GitHub, which is the recommended version. Uh, we will be doing that in a future video since we'll be using this for a, uh, a Postgres tutorial as well. So let's go through metrics. There's no metrics currently for this. A lot of these things won't really have too many metrics until you or won't have too many features until you actually deploy an app. And then even sometimes you need to upgrade that app, right? So this is the free tier. Um, they have paid tiers as well, and you can pay to get upgraded dynos um, and upgraded instances that will do more, right? So you have our activity here. Um, you can kind of see that, you know, this is our feed and you can actually roll back to previous versions and things like that. So it's pretty cool how they give you access to all that. Um, this is access. So collaborators, you can add collaborators to this particular app. And then you have your settings, right? So here's your config bars. You can actually start adding uh, configuration variables here like database URLs things like that um, so we'll hide that for now and here's your stack Heroku 20 now the upgraded stack I think they're on Heroku 22 so you could go ahead and upgrade it immediately if you want or you can just stick with you know the uh, the standard version that they give you um, and then also up here you have some nice things where we have webhooks and logs and as well as you can actually run a console um, and restart your dynos as well so one of the things about Heroku that I'm not a fan of is that um, you don't actually get a lot of uh, automatic restart capabilities and things like that with your dyno. So there's no health checks like Azure and GCP and AWS all have health checks that will automatically restart your instances. You don't have that with Heroku, right? So a lot of people, a lot of times people will create like a, a separate app that will actually do the health check themselves. And this restart dynos is an actual uh, API call so you could actually hit your own API and restart the dyno so I think that'll be a really cool future video that will definitely do um, for configuring that for Heroku since Heroku doesn't really provide it for you out of the box uh, but what we can do is we can go to resources here and let's uh, go to find more add-ons and these are all of Heroku's add-ons right so they have you know a ton of different things that you can kind of go through. We're gonna actually look for some database stuff. So um, you know they have all of these options. So, you know you could actually hook up MySQL things like that. But we're gonna actually look for uh, a Postgres instance here. So we have Heroku Postgres. 
Uh, definitely a good option. This is kind of what I've used for every Postgres instance that I've ever built on Heroku. Um, and so let's go ahead and select that. And it kind of goes through exactly, you know, everything that they have here. So they have region availability, which is really good. Um, well, it's not great, but it's United States and Europe. Um, but typically what you would need uh, for a lot of the people um, that are stateside or in Europe, and they have different tiers as well. So you have Hobby Basic, Hobby Dev is obviously the free instance. Now you only have a 10,000 row limit and a one gigabyte storage capacity. So it's small and you don't actually get any RAM either. Um, but you can, you can upgrade to $9 a month and you'll get a significantly larger row limit with a significantly larger storage capacity. And then honestly, the standard is pretty basic for any production app um, where you actually have RAM involved. You have 64 gigs of storage. You have a bigger connection limit and you actually have rollback as well. And the rollback alone is worth paying for in my mind. So um, again, definitely recommend. I mean, you go all the way down to Shield 9, $16,000 a month. Uh, only companies are using that, obviously. And for any personal project, I hope you're not needing Shield 9. Or actually, I hope you do. Um, be absolutely crushing it with whatever your personal project is. Uh, but again, we're gonna go ahead and just click install there. And we're gonna say that we just want the free one. And we're gonna search for the app to provision it to. So let's look for Covalence Postgres there. All right, so it's gonna go ahead and add it to this app. And we're gonna submit the order form. All right, so you can see that it's attached here. Um, it's a quick add. Sometimes if it has to provision the database, it might take a little while, but for this particular instance, it doesn't need to. So it attaches it as database and so what that means actually is if we go to settings and reveal the config bar you can actually see that it adds this database url um, so we actually have the database url given to us already so um, we can now go to if we click this upper right hand corner this little uh, apps button here um, we can go to data but in our app we can actually access this if we're going to build a node.js app we can access it through process.env.database url but we click on data, right? We'll see that we have our data stores here and we have this unique uh, URL-ish type thing. It's, it's really a name, but they treat it as a URL. And we can pop open the uh, instance here and or the data store instance and we can see that there's more tabs. Um, they love their tabs. So we have overview, we have durability. Now, again, like I showed you, the hobby databases don't have any rollback. Um, if this were a standard instance where you're paying uh, $50 a month, I think is the minimum, um, you would actually see the ability to do rollbacks and continuous protection. So that's extremely nice. Now in the settings, uh, we have everything in terms of wanting to destroy the database. We can reset the database. Um, it deletes all the data, which is a nice way if you're just kind of playing around with stuff. If you want to just instead of truncating all the tables or, or you know, individually deleting all the tables, you can just reset the thing, which is pretty nice. Um, and you can also view the credentials. So the credentials themselves, um, they, you know, they host this all on Amazon AWS, ironically. Uh, but again, um, you know, we can actually connect using these. So if we installed something like dBeaver, so we have dBeaver here, we can go ahead and start kind of plugging these in. So if we grab the host, we can update this host. We can see the database right there. Add that database, username. By the way, I'm going to delete this database so you won't be able to uh, actually come in here and mess it all up before us or just load it up with data. Even if you could, it's a hobby database. It's free. Really don't care. We hit our limit. Not a big deal. But we are going to delete this database. Um, the port 5432 is there. It's kind of the default Postgres port and our password. So we're going to go ahead and pop that password in there and we can test the connection. Go ahead and see that it was correct. We'll finish kind of pops up here. So this is also a little dBeaver tutorial. Um, you can go ahead and rename this. You can just say, you know, covalence Postgres test. All right, and then you pop that open. And you can see that our database is in here. We don't get to rename this database. Uh, this is, you know, something that the Postgres plugin or the Postgres add-on does for us. Um, there may be a way to do it. I don't, I've never really bothered, but you can see that the default schema is given to you, so it's public. And we don't have any tables, but that will be for a future video. 
All right, so I hope that all made sense. I tried to keep it pretty quick, pretty painless, but if you have any additional questions, feel free to post them below. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure to mash that subscribe button because we're gonna be releasing plenty of more videos. And if you have any recommendations for future content or need help with anything additional, let us know. See you soon.